In this video, I want to look at a somewhat complicated integrand, one that is not straightforward and transparently one of the five different methodologies that we saw in the previous video. It's going to turn out that it's going to be a couple of the methodologies all sort of combined into one, and I want to describe the thought process of how I determine which methodology to apply in any particular place. First, I'm just going to note that the other major methods don't apply immediately. Uh, this is not a, a quotient of polynomials because of the ln of x, so it's not partial fractions. It's not going to be a trig sub because we have 1 plus x cubed, not 1 plus x squared. It doesn't have any trig terms, so it's not going to be some trig identities, at least not yet. But the one thing I can look at, the one thing that I can sort of sink my teeth into, is that I note that I have this x cubed down here on the bottom, and I have this x squared up here on the top that I have this relationship of a polynomial of degree n and a polynomial of degree n minus 1. And this screams out to me that perhaps I should use either u equals 1 plus x cubed or u equals x cubed. I don't immediately know which of those two sh I should use, but I'm tempted towards u equals x cubed simply because if I do the 1 plus x cubed business, then in my ln of x, when I transfer that into u's, that's going to be a little bit messier. You're going to have some sort of difference there. So let me go and try what happens if I set u equals to x cubed. Maybe it's going to work out. Maybe it's not. We'll have to see. Well, if I do that, then du is equal to 3x squared dx. And I might also rearrange the top to say that x is equal to u to the power of one third. This is going to be particular useful for the ln of x, which will now be ln of u to the power of one third. So let's transfer into u's. First of all, I have an x squared dx on the top. That's going to be now one third. So I'll put the one third out the front, uh, one third du, and I'll leave the du off to the right. Then I have an ln of x, but now the ln of x transforms to an ln of u to the power of one third, all divided by one plus u squared. All right, this is getting a little bit better. And maybe I'll do one other just little piece of algebra here, which is to note that if I have some log rules, I've got this u to the one third, the one third can come out the front because ln of x to the a is equal to a ln of x. So in other words, this is going to be a ninth out the front, the integral of ln of u divided by 1 plus u squared du. Now, this ln of u, the natural log of u, is, is one of these things that keeps on and consistently screwing things up for me. Because, again, I can't just straightforwardly apply a method like, for instance, partial fractions because of its existence. And generally, uh, ln of u, if I'm able to integrate it, it's a bit of a mess, but differentiating ln of u is actually quite nice, it's just 1 over u. So maybe I want to do that. Maybe I want to find some way that I can differentiate ln of u, and to do that, I want to do integration by parts, where I'm going to let my u to be ln of u, or my new u to be ln of u, and dv to be this other business that I have around, the 1 plus u squared, the 1 over 1 plus u squared. All right, I'm going to do integration by parts here. I'm going to allow v to be equal to ln of u, and then I'm going to give a, a new symbol here, w. dw is going to be equal to du, du over 1 plus u squared. And I'm using v and w here instead of u and v just because u's already been taken up. So I want to have new variables, so I'm using v and w for my integration by parts. All right, so if v is the natural log of u, then dv is going to be equal to 1 over u du. And if dw is du over 1 plus u squared, then my w is going to be equal to 1 plus u to the minus 1. Taking that derivative would introduce another minus sign, so I need to put a minus 1 plus minus 1 plus u to the power of minus 1. All right, so let's see how this becomes in the integration by parts formula. The 1 ninth, it sticks out the front. Now I want to do v times w, so this is going to be ln of u multiplied by negative 1 plus u to the minus 1 minus, I'm going to have a negative in here, so I'm going to put a plus, two negatives makes a plus, the integral, now I want to do w 
dv. So this is going to be minus 1 over, I've got a u here, and I've also got a 1 plus u du. So this was me doing my integration by parts, and now I've gotten rid of the natural log of u that was sort of tripping things up. So I first cleaned it up with a substitution. That got rid of some of the extra powers of x. Then I did an integration by parts to deal with the ln of x that I didn't want. But now what I have, this business that remains over here, is, well, a 1 on the top and a polynomial on the bottom. So it's a rational function, and therefore integration by partial fractions is going to apply to this. So what I want to do is therefore take the integrand here and apply the method of partial fractions to it. I have a 1 divided by u times a 1 plus u. My standard guess, this is a product of linear factors, is going to be a divided by u plus b divided by 1 plus u. Multiplying by the denominator, this is going to give me 1 is equal to a times 1 plus u plus b times u. And I need to solve for a and b now, so I'm going to set u equal to 0. That is going to imply that 1 is just equal to a. And u equals to minus 1 is going to imply that 1 is equal to b times minus 1, so b is equal to minus 1. In other words, if I'm going to take this little bit that I have here, I can now figure out what this integral is going to be. So this algebra is going to allow me to replace the integral of 1 over u times 1 plus u du with the integral of 1 divided by u minus 1 divided by 1 plus u du. And this is going to be ln of u minus ln of 1 plus u, all plus c. So putting all of this together, I am therefore going to get, copying and pasting mostly, 1 divided by 9, ln of u multiplied by minus 1 plus u to the minus 1. And then I have a, a minus sign in front of all the side computation I did. So it is going to be minus the natural log of absolute value of u plus the natural log of absolute value 1 plus u all finally plus some constant c. And I'm not quite done yet because I've written my final answer all in terms of u, but we had made a u sub all the way back at the beginning. We had denoted that u was just going to be equal to x cubed, so in my final answer down here I need to come and substitute all of my u's for x cubed, so this is going to be 1 ninth, the natural log of x cubed minus 1 plus x cubed minus 1 minus the natural log of x cubed plus the natural log of 1 plus x cubed finally plus c. So at the end of the day this method really had three different parts to it. First we did a u sub to get rid of the x cubed. Then we did an integration by parts to sort of clean up the natural log of x. And finally we finished it off with an integration by partial fractions. And it's worth noting that I didn't know we were going to get to a partial fractions at the end of this example. It happens to work out that way, or at least I wouldn't know if I'd seen this problem for the first time. So part of this is, is coming up with an initial strategy, your initial substitutions, and then you sort of follow your nose and you apply methods as they reveal themselves further along in the computation.